So I've been trying to figure out a way that uh, that I could tackle this question in a short uh, in a short video, and it, it's going to take a bit of a longer video. So if you're interested in diabetic ulcers and how they actually happen, keep watching. Otherwise, you're in it for about ten minutes. Um, okay, so here's the thing. I did a video on HbA1c and I referred to uh, um, blood cells, red blood cells that are carrying high concentrations of sugar, in other words, have a high HbA1c count as more abrasive, more sticky than red blood cells with a lower HbA1c. And as a result, the stickier, higher HbA1c blood cells, as they travel through our physiology, they, they bump into the walls of our blood vessels and they, they cause microscopic injuries, nanoscopic injuries. That stimulates the process of inflammation to repair that damage. Uh, so there is no question that somebody with a higher HbA1c is accelerating the damage on the inside of their blood vessels. And it's not just coronary vessels or cerebral vessels. It's vessels everywhere in their body. And that includes the blood vessels that feed the very, very small nerve cells that control blood vessel size. So if you think of the blood vessels that are perfusing, oxygenating, and bringing nutrient to the tissues of your lower leg, as an example, as a person starts to develop higher HbA1c, uh, dysglycemic conditions like diabetes, what we're going to start to see is an increase in blood viscosity, that stickiness, increase in blood viscosity. The tiny little blood vessels that provide nutrient not only to the skin, but also nutrient to the nerves that control blood vessel size, those parasympathetic and sympathetic nerve branches that cause vasoconstriction and vasodilation, those nerves also have a blood supply that becomes impaired as a person starts to develop a peripheral neuropathy. So we often think of peripheral neuropathy as an inability to feel or to, to you know, numb toes, you can't feel the stone in your foot or you can't feel the, the cut on the bottom of the foot as you start to develop peripheral neuropathy. But it's more than that, it's the blood vessels themselves, they lose their capacity to auto-regulate or to regulate, dilate or to, to contract to be able to perfuse tissue when an injury takes place. So we call those diabetic ulcers, the proper term is a neuropathic ulcer. It's actually first damage to the nerve supply and then because the nerve supply has been damaged, as a result of poorly perfused nerves literally dying away, as those nerves die away, there is no control over uh, manipulating blood flow or a diminished control over manipulating blood flow. Uh, so tissue doesn't get the vasodilation that it needs and therefore the oxygen that it needs. Likewise, the tissue doesn't get vasoconstriction that it needs. That regulation of blood, th blood flow through the most distal of our tissues toes, feet, ankles, heels, is going to become diminished over time. So it's a neuropathic ulcer because nerve damage as a result of poorly oxygenated nerve cells dying over time, secondary to the hyperviscosity, the, the thickening, the sugary and stickiness of blood as HbA1c start to, uh, start to climb. Diabetic ulcers.